Welcome to Village in Motion. It is July the 5th. I am Clint Lambert, and it's my pleasure to be the host today of Village in Motion. And if you've ever been interested in how Greenspring got started, and I mean before it got started, the land that Greenspring is built on, we have with us this morning in the studio Larry Ayers, who used to live across the street from Greenspring and owns some property over there, and he knows about the history of the land that Greenspring sits on, and he's going to share that with us this morning. Larry, we are so glad to have you with us this morning. Thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. You have been in the area for how long? I moved back to the area uh, in 50, 1958. Okay. And I bought this track of land in 1961. Oh, all right. And that was the this track across the street. Now yes. it's got houses on it sitting right now, yes. right? So you saw what was going on here before it even went on. That, oh, that's from way back. In fact, I was on the uh, land use committee, mm -hmm. um, which was the approval group for Lee District okay. when they even when they proposed uh, Green Spring. All right. When you moved here, fifty nine. All right. Mm -hmm. There was a family that owned all of this. Is that right? They owned this side of the road. Okay. They owned this side of the road of Hose Road. Okay. Uh, and there wasn't a parkway then, right? No, it was not. Okay, so it's just Hose Road. That's right. Who were the individuals that owned this? Well, it was the Hunter family that okay. had the uh, the 200 acre track, which extended from uh, almost Backlick Road. There was a piece in there owned by the Taylors, all the way through Daventry. Okay. You have a, a slide of that, don't you, of, of, yes. that, of that track. And if we could get that slide up uh, and take a look at it. There we go. There we are. That is the map of 1760. And um, the land in Fairfax County originally was uh, given by Lord Culpepper uh, to get developments. And right in the middle of that map, you'll see kind of a... Uh, Green Triangle, and that's the Fitzhu track, 30,000 acres, uh, and they moved, he got that in 1635. Okay. And that land, that track, uh, was divided and passed down uh, through the family, uh, through um, William Chatham uh, Fitzhu, who built... Uh, Ravensworth Farm. Okay. And I th think I have a picture of the... You've got a picture of the farm, I think, also, don't uh, you? Uh, the, there, that's, there we go. that's the manor house of Ravensworth. And Fitzhugh built that in 1735. All right. And he then lived there uh, until... Uh, he died in, in uh, 1830... No, that was built in 17... Uh, 35, his descendants kept the track of land until around 1840. Okay. Now, uh, what he had this, did he do any development of this area? Oh, yes, he did. If you look, go back to the map, um, it's divided. There's a, a he, one son had uh, Huguenot tenant farmers okay. on the upper half. And the other brother had slaves in the lower half, and they developed it. And uh, they built Rolling Road, right. and they raised tobacco, and they rolled uh, hogsheads or barrels down Rolling Road to the uh, uh, the wharf down there on uh, the uh, Occoquan okay. to ship tobacco out. So, so they actually right. developed that land. So therefore, Rolling Road. That's right. So from rolling barrels of... The rolling barrels of, they call them hogsheads. Hogsheads. And what was in those barrels? Tobacco. Tobacco. That's how okay. they shipped it. And so that was just leaf tobacco at that point? It just uh, dried uh, Well, leaf? it was packed. Okay. Packed. Uh, have you ever been to a tobacco farm? Yes. You've seen how they pack them on baskets? Right. Well, they pack it in there and then load it into the ships and send it to England. Oh, so you would go all the way down to the Aquaquan. Mm -hmm. All right. And so 
The family kept that piece of property. Right. They kept that piece of property until around um, 1850. And um, parallel to that, there was a family by the name of Gillingham. All right. And they were shipbuilders in Philadelphia. And uh, they sent a young son of theirs, uh, Chapley, where there's a picture of him, down to Norfolk to find oak timber. They had oak, they had timbered out most of the New Jersey, Pennsylvania area, so built, they, and they were looking for new timber. So they had already cut out the, the good oh, timber. Oh yeah, right? they had gone to, they had been in their shipbuilding. So he okay. came down and came up through this area and went back and said the best track of timber, oak timber, was in the uh, Akating Valley. All right, and that's what this area is called, right? It was the Akating Valley. Okay. So they immediately then um, decided that they would try and buy some land. Mm -hmm. And it turned out that George Washington's great-great-grandson, Nellie's son, N Nellie was the uh, uh, one that got uh, uh, Woodlawn. Okay. And there was a 2,000-acre tract there. Her son was a near-do-well. He kind of went through his wealth. Mm. And the Woodlawn had gotten in terrible shape. Okay. So the uh, Gillingham came down and bought the 200 acres and moved uh, 40 families in there. And they mm. set up a, uh, a town. And oh, you go over there on Belvoir now, they were Quakers. And the, the Quaker church is right. over there on the... Uh, Proving ground, and, and in regards to that, that church still exists. That's right, and it's a it's across US one from the actual main post of, That's right. of Fort Belvoir, and my wife and I uh, had the distinction of, of being invited to a, a service there, um, and uh, felt very honored to to go to a service, and uh, unfortunately it was for one of our residents here uh, who had deceased, okay. and. Uh, our daughter had gone to a Quaker service and had gone to a Quaker school when we lived in Pennsylvania, uh, in Philadelphia. She went to Lansdowne Friends uh, for her part of her education, and uh, we felt very, very honored to, to again yes. go back. And so, the Hunters and that and the, uh, Gilliams were all Gillinghams. Gillinghams were all Quakers. Not the Hunters. The okay. Gillinghams were. Okay, the Gillinghams. Okay. And so then they expanded. They had a community. They built a sawmill, mm. and one of the sawmills is down here under the bridge. It was called Bone Mill. Was a, a sawmill, and they built the sawmills all through the Akating Valley, and then they used Rolling Road to haul the oak timbers, rough cut, mm -hmm. down, loaded it, and sent it around to Philadelphia for um, building ships. So they. Rolling Rotor again had, had rolling timber, right? That's right, rolling, rolling timber. You exactly. mentioned the mill, and that mill is down the hill from Green Spring. Yes. Uh, on the Akatink Creek area. It's right there, right under the Parkway Bridge. Okay, all right. And um, so uh, Chatley expanded, and he bought a 200 acre track. Hmm. in here off of the uh, Fitzhughes. And it happened to be the track that uh, Greenspring is on. So uh -huh. that's how that original 200 acre track, and it started almost, not quite to uh, uh, Backlick, but went all the way through Daventry and across the uh, Akating Valley, and he it, bought that. When you say Daventry, what is included in Daventry? Well, Daventry backs up to the West Springfield uh, golf course. Okay. And it's sort of that land in on the other on the west side of Akating Creek. In okay. There. But is it the golf course golf course part of Daventry? No, it was not. Okay. Now I, it's quite possible someone else. Well, that was all part of uh, of uh, the Ravensworth track. Okay. But uh, uh, anyway. Uh, Chatley then sold the land to Sam, mm -hmm. and Sam, uh, I have a, a map with Sam's house on a Civil War 
Interesting. Uh, a map and uh, and it, it then the land passed down through generations through David and on down to Frank. Okay. And Frank had uh, some children and one of them was Edna. And Edna Hunter is the one I knew. She she was born in 1906. Hmm. Okay. And she married a uh, Captain Hunter. He was an army captain. In those days, uh, rank of captain was pretty high. We yeah. think of generals, but the right. captain was pretty good. Anyway, she married him, and they had a son, Herbert. Okay. Uh, and Herbert was born in 1929. So Herbert was just three years older than I was. Mm. So when I moved out here and became active in the community, I got in the Alliance Club mm -hmm. and we would go to the Hunter Motel uh, down there at Newington. I got to know her very well. And the Hunter Motel is where the current, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the name of it, uh, starts with an E. <coughs> currently is. It yeah. currently sits on the corner of 95 and the Parkway. That's right. Okay. Um, so I got to know Herb very well, and uh, it turned out that Herb married um, Shirley. Shirley was a nurse, and they didn't have any children. He, for some reason, they, either they couldn't, so they adopted uh, a little girl, mm -hmm. Edie, and Edie was the same age as my youngest, uh, Kelly. Okay. So Kelly and Edie played together, and uh, they would come get uh, Kelly because they wanted some company for <laughs> Edie up there on the farm. And uh, we, the hunters would have uh, picnics for the Lions Club and the different organizations. Here on the land that we're sitting right. on. Right. Okay. And uh, if you'll go to another uh, slide, there's the farm, and if you'll the, see the driveway coming out, that driveway, actually that piece right now sits right where the parkway goes through. The parkway took all of those buildings out and uh, that driveway goes right down Lackawanna Drive. And there's a swimming pool there by the manor house, if you can see it. But so, Lackawanna Drive is on the other side of the parkway. Yes, Hose Road paralleled the parkway and Lackawanna was one of the early subdivisions in okay. the area. And so the uh, driveway goes out to Hose Road? Yeah, you see it coming down there? Yes, okay. And well, so just to orient people to what we're talking about, the manor house sits kind of like in the middle of the, of the Y. Uh, no, no, it's over here where it looks like a swimming pool. Can you see it? Oh, yeah, you got the arrow there, that's it. Okay. That's it right there. All right. That's the old manor house. Now over here on the left uh, is a house. No, that's the um, barn. You can see mm -hmm. the silo mm -hmm. uh, on it. And there were some tenant houses. And the lake that we have here uh, is back behind up in the northwest or east corner is where the there was a pond back in there. They enlarged it into a lake. That oh, okay. we, that we have here. It, you, you mean, is that our, our catchment uh, area there? Say? Is that our, our, our catchment Catch, area? Yeah, that's. Okay. And okay. when I came here, uh, that was, they had cattle mm -hmm. and uh, they uh, used hay and grain mm. and uh, it was an operating farm. Okay. But one of the interesting things also was uh, the hunters, going back to Gillingham, continued to timber. And they had a practice where they would buy boundaries of timber and then leave it mm. because the land was so poor. You couldn't farm much. Right. My grandmother said the rabbit would have to pack a lunch going across Fairfax County if the <laughs> land was so poor. Anyway, uh, they kept buying up pieces of land. So they had land at Newington. They had land all where the... Uh, 95 is, they had land down near Lorton, and even subdivisions over uh, on part of Belvoir. So 
then when the war came along and suddenly people were looking for sand and gravel, mm. they discovered uh, sand and gravel and so the hunters were selling sand and gravel. So Kingstown and that whole area was a big sand and gravel pit selling uh, sand and gravel for the highways and for Shirley Highway and the, the Pentagon. So they, they made a fortune. Right. And that area still is a sand and gravel area, right? That's right. And so we're currently where Wegmans is built. Was a sand and gravel was pit. Was a big sand and gravel pit, right? It's all part of, of so that's how they were. Uh, during the Depression, they were land poor, mm. but uh, they kept selling timber. Uh, they sold a lot of timber for railroad ties mm. during the railroading era. Right. But then the sand and gravel made a fortune. So in the later years, <clears throat> The uh, firehouse down here on uh, Backlick, Backlick, mm -hmm. the uh, hunters donated that. Okay. And the uh, Masons, that's the Hunter Lodge, mm -hmm. they donated that. Along, uh, next to the firehouse, right. right. They donated quite a bit of, th of things here in the Springfield area. Interesting, interesting. Uh, when they donated the firehouse, was it a, uh, at that point, what, what were the fire trucks like? Well, uh, they were not quite like they are now, but they were pretty, we didn't have horse, horse drawn was right. during those days. <laughs> um, I wanted to go on and, and say that uh, the next slide, I think there's a slide there. Um, yes, that's a satellite picture of uh, Greenspring. Right. And you see the parkway there going up. And if you look up at the, top of the area, that subdivision is a subdivision over the land that I had. Okay. And that driveway that I showed on the earlier one uh, went uh, right there where Lackawanna Drive is at the entrance of my subdivision. So if you come right up that uh, the area over uh, what is now Garden Ridge, that's where their farm sat. Oh, okay, all right up a little bit more, down a little bit more, but yeah, right in that, no, that's it, right in that area. That's where the farm was. All right. And, uh, and that was a 200 acre farm at that point? It was, uh, well, yeah, they had 200 acres, but they had sold off Daventry. Okay. So it got smaller. I think the track that uh, Erickson bought was 84 acres. All right. And that, is in, that includes where we currently sit. That's right. And off to the left on that slide, correct? Yes. Uh, was now, they of, had to donate some uh, parkland to the county, but uh, that's basically. And, you know, if you walk down the Akatig Creek, there are still some huge oak trees yes. down there. And even over uh, when I bought the place, I had about eight great big oak trees mm. in my yard. They were beautiful <laughs> oaks. Uh, they were beautiful except in the fall when uh, the acorns dropped, I could hardly walk because of oh, acorns. acorns. I eventually got a, a big uh, vacuum cleaner to suck up acorns. <laughs> with, the, with the property over where you owned it on, on the other side, uh, <clears throat> were there a lot of homes there or just No, there, there were, well, there were, uh, four families. One, there was a, a log house down by the creek where the bridge goes across okay. on Hose Road. And that was originally uh, Justine Macweed. Now I, I knew I'd remember okay. it. Justine was, uh, ran the mill mm. for uh, the uh, Gillinghams. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, he was a millwright. Mm -hmm. And he had uh, several offsprings. Uh, one of them was Ernest, and Ernest lived up above me. And when we moved out, Ernest uh, was about 50-some years old, and he had married uh, Mary when she was about 16, and they had uh, a child. Mm -hmm. So there was, and he, uh, he sharpened saws and okay. did that sort of thing, had a little store. And then on up from that was the Dodsons, mm. and they were old families, and then the Taylors, and they would go back to the Civil War period. And so it really was a small community. It was. Okay. My kids uh, 
walked up there to Lackawanna Drive uh, to catch the bus, and Mr. Taylor drove the bus. Mm -hmm. And uh, every September, I'd have to get out and mow uh, through the field so that the kids wouldn't get wet from the dew right. going to the, the bus. Very good. And Hunters had a son, right? They did, Herb. And Herb was about my age. Okay. And he, he was a very industrious guy. I liked Herb a lot. He, uh, uh, it turned out in uh, 1976, he was there at the Hunter Motel, and a young kid came in there <clears throat> and held him up mm. at the cash register, and I guess Herb was reluctant to give him money, and the kid shot him and killed him. Ah. And uh, so that was a sad thing, and I think there's a, there it is, there's the, the, yeah. The write up. The, the write up I found of uh, her <clears throat> Herb. And he left a widow, uh, Shirley, and then Edie, the, the child. Right. And his mother was still living, uh, Edna, uh, and she had a house that she had built just down from the manor house. She had given yeah. Herb and Shirley the manor house. Mm. And so they, they lived there uh, through the period that. I knew them. And then, <clears throat> I guess the next slide is... Uh, it is actually the <coughs> headstone for the hunters, right? <coughs> so they said the next slide is the headstone for yeah, the, the, the hunters. Yeah, and that's so, uh, that is located um, in the, on the Powick Church uh, okay. grounds of the cemetery there in Route 1, the old Powick right. Church. And Herb's mother and dad are there <clears throat> and I should say something a little bit about the hunters. I've researched some, them some. Mm -hmm. I did find out that Arlington, uh, originally there was a manor down at where the terminal is at uh, the National Airport, oh, okay. and it was called Abington, and there's a foundation and a park there now. And Abington was owned at one time by General Hunter, who had been with Washington during the Civil War. Oh, okay. And I believe Herb is a descendant part of that. Of, okay. from that Hunter family. Interesting. So there is a lot of history a that lot, we're sitting on. A lot of history. Uh, and you know, we are enjoying all the um, products that they produced. I mean, and allowed us to buy up, right? I find it fascinating. Every time I go out and uh, go do some, cemeteries are great places, <laughs> libraries are great places, and church. Yes. I got booklets. I have a, the diary of Chatley um, Gillingham through the Civil War, mm. day by day. Right. And it's a fascinating read. So the history, and I even have the uh, death certificate of uh, Edie, uh, uh, Edna. Yeah. So uh, doing the research is, uh, and you were asking about the early fire engines. Right. There, there's a picture of one there. I don't have it. But yeah, yeah, much different than today. It is, <laughs> much but different. it's been fun being here through this period of time. Exactly. I would think so. And you know, with all this, you have demonstrated the fact of how one person can gain all kind of history in regards to what's going on in the area and those type of things. And for those that don't know, <clears throat> we have an ongoing project right now that's headed by the president of the resident council, Betty Christman. And there is a um, meeting coming up here fairly shortly uh, in regards to individuals who are interested in participating. In fact, there's a slide up on the TV now. Uh, on July the 8th, uh, Betty Christman, uh, at Hunter's Crossing Craft Room at 1.30 p.m. And she's looking for people that are interested in gathering information about Greenspring all the way through everything. And so you've brought us up to when Greenspring really got started. Yes. Yeah. And i tell you something. I gave, I gave a lecture earlier. The 10th uh, anniversary of Greenspring, they put out the I guess it was a villager, mm -hmm. and it is the stock with history of of the building of Green Springs yes. and what the sequence was, 
and what was here and, and how some of the traditions got started. So that's, there's a lot of data around if you'll dig it up. Yes. And, you know, it'd be so nice to get residents more actively involved be? and learning about what happened before we came uh, in regards That's to That's right. Well, Larry, this has been absolutely marvelous. I am so glad that you came and joined us. Well, and, thank you for asking me. You have all this material, and if someone is interested in learning more about what you have, what would they do, contact you? Jim, be glad to share it with them. Okay. And you are a resident, and you live... Yeah, I live in Oak Hill, Okay. Uh, Oak Hill 212, uh, and I've been here, I'm coming up, well, I'm in my fifth year, so mm -hmm. All right. been very here good. for five years. Well, Larry, again, thank you very, very thank much. Thank you, and uh, thank you for inviting me. My pleasure, and I hope everybody learned something in regards I to I hope it. so, too. Okay.